Ever wonder how you can use data from the internet for your business? Well, you're in the right place. My name is Ariel Herrera, and I'm a data scientist. This is a technical deep dive on how to do web scraping for real estate data. So stay tuned. Hey everyone, I'm really excited about this video. Today we're going to be going over web scraping, a technical deep dive, my first technical deep dive video that I've done yet. What I'm doing, the main goal here is I'm trying to scrape information based on websites. So really awesome thing about Databricks is that it's super easy to add widgets. And these are basically variables that you can interchange. So I have two widgets, one's a website URL, Another one's a news URL, two websites that we're going to scrape. So to get started, I'm importing certain libraries. Beautiful Soup, this is good for being able to extract contact from the web and actually be able to parse out this text. Requests, also used for web scraping. And then my favorite library, which is Pandas, working with data frames. So I'm also setting, um, enabling arrow-based columnar data transfers for Spark because I do want to save my data frame and because I'm on Databricks, I have to convert it to a Spark data frame first. So using this function I created, get URL contents, is how I'm actually extracting the contents from the website. Using request library, I get the URL and the URL here is the NJ library website. This is where I'm gonna get municipality data because I wanna see in a table form all of the counties, then the cities that map with them. So what I do here is I highlight, I right click, I hit inspect, and then you could see the entire HTML structure of the website. So luckily they have this in a good table format, which is the class is OMSC custom table. So what I do is that I grab this information in order to get all the data. So I'm parsing the the website that I'm using beautiful soup to extract the contents which I do here then I look for the table tag which was you see up here when you see that less sign and then the first element that comes after it that's the tag so our tag is table if you want to understand more about HTML a great resource is w3 schools it describes HTML tables and then you can understand how to even create your own HTML, HTML table as well. So back here, I look for that class, that OMSC custom table. And then I'm looking to find the second tag, which is T-body. And that is over here, so just one level down. And if I use Prettyfy, instead of everything being jumbled up in a couple lines of output, this actually has everything separated by line, similar to how we see it here. So we could see that we have our table body, we have the rows, and a header tag. The header tag is where we have our actual county, Atlantic. And then within that, after that, there's an unordered list. There's a subset of lists in there, and you can see Atlantic City is one of them. So again, what we want to do is for each of these counties, we want to see all of the related cities for them. So what I'm doing next variable that I call table body. I'm looking for all those headers, so all the counties, and I'm extracting the text for them. And I put this into a list. Next thing I'm doing is finding all of those unordered lists. So this is where we have all the city information, right here. And then within those unordered lists, I want to find the list tag, because that's where I can get the city name, the text for it. And I'm appending that to this list called city list. So I create a dictionary in order to have a really easy to look at mapping, which is the county and then all the cities as a list. So what I'm doing next is I'm iterating through my dictionary that I just created, all the keys. So the keys would be the counties. For each of those cities within the dictionary, I'm mapping the county and the city together into one list. And you could see that output down here. So the next thing I'm doing is I'm converting it now to a data frame, which is super easy. This list, I just put it in here, flatten, and then columns. Uh, awesome resource is Chris Albon. 
great resources on understanding pandas and other stuff for Python. And then I save this data frame down uh, using my custom function, which is where I pass a data frame, a file name, and an optional, someone could change the file path, converting my data frame into a Spark data frame, and then using this write format, Databricks Spark CSV, I'm writing it out and then printing that it's saved. We have a target area in mind, which is East Brunswick. For those that are curious, is right over here in Middlesex. It's very close to New Brunswick, which is where Rutgers State University resides, and that's where I went to. Okay, so we got our first subset, our data frame that has county and city. Cool, but can we do anything really with this? No, we want to have more data to bring in. And this is where we're actually looking to get news data. Why am I trying to get this? It's because I want to know what's going on in the local town without having to talk to neighbors. <laughs> it's one of the options, but it's a manual way, knocking on doors and figuring out what's going on. Not trying to do that. Right click, hit inspect. I could see, I want to get all the titles for this web page. So you could see the titles here, five new open houses in the East Brunswick area. And that's the link for I guess this is more information on that blog. So we want to just get the title. I don't really care right now about what's going on in that blog. And as you can see, the class here is near black link. Sorry if this text is small, but a way to identify um, different parts of the HTML structure is that class ID. So what I'm doing now is I have the contents. I am looking for all A tags. And these are tags that um, attribute to links. So as you can see back here, there was that link to the actual blog post. We don't care about that. We just want to get the title. So we have class, and then we set to near black link. That's what we're looking for. And we're saying find all. So we want to find all the titles, not just the first one. Whereas in the other website that we have, we only had one single table. So we could just do find. So what I'm doing now is I'm iterating through all of the A tags and I'm only extracting the text. And this is my blog titles list. And then I make it into a little bit of a pretty format so we can read it. And this is where we get all of our blog titles. Now the next thing I want to do is to be able to get blog descriptions. So the way I did this was, again, highlighting, right click, inspect. And as you see here, it says here's the most recent properties, etc. And this is the class ID. So I was a little bit worried at first. I was thinking this is a really long class ID. Could it only be specific just to this one single blog? But I got lucky and it actually is the class ID for all of the blog descriptions. Similar to the previous, I found all of them, then went through them, got the text. I noticed that the text came back a little bit funky. So I replaced where these characters came through uh, replace that with nothing. That way I can get just the full description about those weird characters. Now I want to put it in a, in a data frame format, table format so that we can easily read it. I create a range of values between 1 through 10, pretty easy. Then I bring back in my blog titles list, only select the first 10. Blog descriptions list, only select the first 10. Uh, the format was shifted, so I had to use T to uh, transpose it. Then I renamed each of the columns because they first came out as 0, 1, and 2 to blog number, blog title, and blog description. And then I manually forced, not manually forced, but I forced in the value East Brunswick as the city for all of those. And this is the first five rows. Now data is only so worthwhile if you can, if you have it separated, but it's better when you have it merged or joined together. So what I'm doing is that initial table that we had up here that we labeled as DF for data frame has the county and city. I am now joining that with my blog data. I'm joining it based upon on the top uh, right hand corner where I'm hovering against city. My original data frame, I'm merging it now with the news, I'm merging it by left. And what I'm doing here is now I'm just displaying it so you can only see the East Brunswick. So I gave you the overview of how to do web scraping, how to get your information to a tabular format. But what do we have so far? So we have a set of features. We have our county, city, blog number, title, and description. So it'd be useful if we can actually have a tag associated with it, which would be if the blog title is important, label as one. If not important, label as zero. 
We could have a human do this, but that is not efficient. As we know, people are prone to error. There's a cost to train someone, and it's not scalable for looking at, say, over 100 news websites daily. So we want to build a machine learning model that can do this. If there is interest, I could always create a video of creating a machine learning model. I'm not going to do that here. I'm just going to go at a high level what steps you would take. So you would want to use natural language processing to extract the text. This is how a computer can actually synthesize text data. Then we can cluster groups of similar titles together. So example here, you can see that words related around buildings, and they've been broken up into different clusters based on concepts, words, and groups. Well, in our case, you want to have clusters of the titles, because as we could see here, first look at dramatic new Route 18 development in East Brunswick. That's important because it has to do with new construction. But then when we go to see down here, most expensive home on the market in East Brunswick, like who cares? Not me. That is not going to benefit me and my investment strategy. Using a machine learning model, we could separate these titles apart from each other to quickly be able to assess, okay, these this group of titles was important, whereas these groups aren't. So we can quickly label those. Now when we quickly label those, what are we doing? We're building out a data set. A data set which we could then feed into a model, a machine learning model. This is the overall process, which in this phase we've already done, we've in this notebook. We've already collected data, we've processed it, we cleaned it, we've explored it. The next step would be to have a labeled data set where we can train a model. Then we can visualize its, its output and debate or decide whether we're going to keep our model or tweak it or maybe add more data. Once we finish this, we can have a finished product and this finished product will be awesome because we can have an automated way of getting news article data, having it tagged if it's important or not important, and then we can even automate that further by sending alerts to our phone when it's important. Web scraping is not always a solution. It's a great thing that's been going on for several years now of companies having APIs. And what this is called application programming interface, meaning that instead of having to go through the HTML structure, which we did over here, these websites actually provide you the data. So you, all you would need to do is generate some sort of key where you can get this data in a raw form. Unfortunately, not every website has APIs available. You can also look into different websites tools such as Import.io where they actually have a UI, a user interface for you to be able to extract some of this web content for you and then save it into a table. So before I conclude, some things I do want to mention is so much possibility with extracting data from the web. I mean, we could even get data about permits for towns. So for example, say we want to track that new development for East Brunswick, we can do so by tracking their municipality website on what new permits have come about. If new permits of the development are resurfacing, then we can make that association that yes, this development is going to happen and I should maybe look into buying in East Brunswick. You can also look at local forums. Why is this important? Can't you just get the data from the municipality? Yes, but no, because you can get the raw information, but it's important to understand how people are reacting to it. And as you can see at the very bottom, this is an example of a town called Manalapan, which I'm a part of the Facebook group, even though I currently don't reside there. There's a new uh, construction occurring where they're going to be removing lots of forests and adding in 250 new housing units. So initially you think, oh yeah, this is awesome, right? There's going to be more growth in this area. Maybe more businesses will come too. However, towns, people are not happy. As you can see at the very bottom, a lot of angry faces here. So these are things that you would want to understand and help to drive your decision when you're thinking of investing in new areas. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and please subscribe.